morning. From Sowerby Bridge. Yes. <coughs> yes. Sowerby Bridge. Which is actually a nice little town. Yeah, it's really nice. It's much quieter than Hebden Bridge and Todd Morden. Yeah. Um little little bit less picturesque, a little yeah. bit more work a day, but still a really nice little town. Lots of old mill buildings and canal side buildings and yeah. boats and there's a little Yeah, and there's a Nice wide towpath and immediately beside it, a little river full of ducks that George will run up and down beside going, I want to eat them, I want to eat them, but then not actually going down there. Uh, George, although he is wandering off that way. <laughs> yeah, no, pleasant little place. Yeah, um, good stop. Yeah, we, the little was nice. We walked into town. Wasn't an awful lot in town. No, Unless although I think it, it, there's a big market space that I think yeah. we just missed that. Came in too late today, so that was sort of emptied out. And a lot of the other stuff is was, you know, closed due to the time of day and COVID. And to be fair, we didn't explore too much. Yeah. The clock tower is nice. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of chimneys, one of which is sort of leaning over at a funny angle. Yeah. Uh, up that way, although it's outside of view from here, but when we were coming down the locks, I saw it as a great... Big tall. Oh, up on the hill. Yeah. Chimney, yeah. Yeah, chimney or tower or monument or something. So lots of um, evidence of industrial days gone past. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Yeah. And we're back down. We're not. We've come off the uh, Pennines really now. So we're down at river level practically. So. Yeah. We're about to do a dog leg and head back up the Pennines because yeah. that's us. <laughs> Essentially, we're at the end of the um, Rochdale, Rochdale Canal. Canal. We're about to go on the Calder and Hebel navigation. Yeah. It it's, means we've had to put my put our trusty Calder and Hebel hand spike on the back just in case that's, that's needed. And we're heading as far as is it Copper Bridge or Cooper Bridge? Cooper Bridge. Which Cooper is Bridge Junction. At the bottom of the um, Huddersfield Wild Wide Huddersfield Wide Canal. Yeah. Um, and we've been there before, but we haven't done this section between there and here. So this is still all new. So. Yeah. And we had some stoppages listed. Uh, where there was navigation, either restrictions or closure between us and Huddersfield itself. And now the Huddersfield wide is empty of any restrictions. Oh, okay. Nothing there. So you don't need to book that lock? You, you still need to book the first lock on the Huddersfield now. Ah, okay. But we can get as far as Huddersfield without having to book anything. Um, and the stoppage that uh, was listed on the Calder and Hebel due to flood locks is, is now gone. So the flood locks may actually be open or they're just operable. Yeah, but we can um, get through, which is the main thing. Yeah, so... All right, then let's get going. Yeah, there's 15 locks total between us and the Huddersfield Wide. Yeah, I probably, probably won't do that all today. Probably there's not. There's lots of moorings listed between here and there so it will just stop when we're ready to stop but i think yeah. we've been told brig house is a nice stop and there's a little there so. yeah so but well basically between here and brig house is artificial cutting right so um, it'll be quite easy going and then after brig house we go on to the river section which then goes all the way to cooper's bridge right. so there are a couple of moorings on there where you go you know sort of off a like through, the, a, through a flood lock and then onto a cut yeah um but but in that section, there isn't really anything. So up until there, we can kind of moor up wherever we need to. All right. After that, we've got a quick rundown. To well, we that. won't get that beyond there today, I'm guessing. Probably not. All right, then. All right. Let's anyway. go. Okay. Then go on. finally reached the end of the lovely Rochdale Canal, quite possibly our favourite canal yet. This is Sowerby Junction and the place where we join the Calder and Hevel navigation. Behind us is a short arm that leads to the Sowerby Bridge Canal Basin. It looks like there's some private moorings down there and it also looks like it's the home to all those Shire cruise hire boats that we've been seeing for the past week. Goodbye Rochdale Canal, thanks for having us! It looks like there's some new canal side properties going up here. The new 
new developments are punctuated by remnants of the canal's industrial origins. There was once mills on both sides of the navigation here. There appears to be some significant work being carried out on this bridge under the scaffolding and plastic covering. Here we're passing under one of the 23 arches of the Copley Railway Viaduct. Now we're approaching Salter Hebble Junction. We're going to be turning right down the locks towards Brig House. Michael drops me and George off so he can get the locks ready and then he's going to take the boat as far as he can up the Halifax branch. The branch now only runs a third of a mile to Exley Quay, but originally it climbed 14 locks all the way to Halifax, two miles north of here. The branch was opened in 1828, but it was sadly abandoned in 1942. That's the end of the Halifax arm. Can't go any further than that. Kind of nice little area though. Turning point. Over that way is a bunch of permanent moorings that are all empty. Not sure why there's no uh, buddy moored down here at the permanent moorings. Must be all out for the summer. But uh, that wouldn't be a bad place to have a permanent moor. And you got a convenient tunnel. under the Wakefield Road Bridge to the junction and straight into the top lock. The Salter Hebble flight is made up of three locks and raises the navigation by 25 feet in total. You need a Calder and Hebble handspike and a British Waterways key to operate them. This lockkeeper's cottage may look small but don't be fooled, this is actually just the top floor of the building. The lower floor can only be seen from the other side. After the lovely long locks on the Rochdale canals, these locks on the Calder and Hebble navigation are noticeably short. We take a very quick stop at the sanitary station in the pound between the locks. You get a much better view of how big that lockkeeper's cottage really is from here.
There's some private and visitor moorings in the lower basin. The bottom lock has a guillotine gate, which is why you need the British waterway key for this one. Trust me to decide to drive the boat just as we get to a push button lock. Another short lock, so more manoeuvrings required to get past these gates. Below the lock, there are some repairs to the towpath being carried out. They appear to be quite extensive, so George and I end up walking on the road, which runs parallel to the canal. And then the towpath reopens again, just before the town of Elland. There's some lovely old mill buildings and warehouses along Elland Wharf. There's some private moorings located here too.
these shorter locks are not so much fun. The gate can't swing back because the bow is in the way, so I have to manoeuvre the boat to the other side without getting under the flow of leaking water behind me. I miss the Rochdale Canal. At the next lock, there's a CRT workboat on the lock landing, so I pull up beside it and wait for Michael to get the lock ready. It's pretty annoying to find all this fuel on the water next to the workboat. There's a Shire Cruise hire boat going up the lock, so Michael goes to help them out. Since we left Alan behind, things have felt a little more rural. When we get to Cromwell Lock, it starts to rain. We meet a Canal and River Trust asset inspector at this lock and he helps us out a little as we pass through, which is a nice bonus. There's a really cute lock keeper's hut at Brookfoot Lock, and according to this sign, the CRT are looking for help with its restoration. Personally, I don't think it's too small to be turned into a dwelling. I mean, if you can live comfortably in a narrowboat, then this building would be just as spacious, if not more. Look at all that headroom for a start. That rural section was short-lived, we now appear to be in an industrial area on the outskirts of Brook House. These are the twin towers of the former Sugden's flour mill. One of the towers is now being utilised as a giant climbing wall. The rain's back. Surely that's a sign that we should call it a day and stop at the moorings in Brick House. It's raining, which is why we're under this little shelter. Yeah, we've we just come into Brick House. Uh, we are about to lose all battery on our audio recorder, so... Um, just, just to say, this was a beautiful cruise. There was 10 locks, I think we did. Yeah. Um, they were quite hard work, and we missed not having someone to be with, but it was also nice to be just, like, going at our own speed again. Yeah. So, and it's a lovely area. Yeah, and uh, 
Although we are getting to the point where we've had to use the hand spike mm, again. And, like and both spike. of us are looking forward to getting <laughs> off onto the Huddersfield wide so we can retire the hand spike. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm getting rained on, so let's just finish this. Weather's gone to crap. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely getting wet. So let's just do our traditional, we're going to be going that way next, trying to get to the Huddersfield wide. Come in, watch the next video if you want to see that. Hopefully Until it, then. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't flood. Hopefully with, it doesn't flood. With all this rain. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, knock wood on that. Ow! Uh, and thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want to get our uh, time lapses. And hit that bell if you want to get notifications. God, I've gotten good at that. And the battery hasn't run out. Whew. Yeah, just didn't die.